What's up, man? 25 Gamers. In today's episode of Scheme of the Week Offensive uh, Scheme here, we're going to be taking a look at a scheme out of the Miami Dolphins D, uh, Offensive Playbook. And uh, in today's video, we're going to discuss our base formation and why we like it so much. And this uh, Team of the Week this week, we're going to be using the Minnesota Vikings with the acquisition of uh, Josh Freeman. We're going to show you guys how I like to use the Minnesota Vikings in Madden NFL 25. Uh, more specifically, how I like to use the Miami Dolphins Offensive Playbook in Madden NFL 25. All right, so the base uh, formation here is this um, shotgun wing offset week. And um, what we want to do here is we want to make sure my – I haven't set my depth chart yet for these guys. I'm going to break that down when I do my team of the week video. But um, with the Vikings, it seems like they have good two tight ends. Um, but they're primarily obviously going to be geared toward running the football. Um, so we're going to definitely be using – uh, Peterson uh, and trying to abuse him as much as possible. So, what we're gonna do uh, our basic our base play out of this package here is the counter uh, the counter Y here. And there's a reason I really like this play, but real quick, it, I call this play so I can get to the quick audibles. The play we're going to run a lot in this offense is the run audible down, the inside zone split. Remember when I did my best run in Madden NFL 25, I said that the inside zone split was the best run. And I think it's one of the better uh, runs in the game, especially from this formation. So let's take a look at this. You see we're going to get that seal on the left edge, and we're going to be able to... to, to Get a one-on-one -on -one with the safety, and with, we can get Adrian Peterson one-on-one -on -one with people like that. Uh, we're going to win that matchup more than not. Now, if they base a line, they're going to get another player over there. You see, um, whoops, I actually went a little bit too quick there. My bad. And the controller's vibrating. But if they base align their defense, um, since it's a, twi a twin set to the right, that means that in a nickel defense, the guy's going to come back over. So now they have the numbers game. Well... It's still going to work the same. It's just you're just going to get hit a little earlier, but you're still going to get that one-on-one -on -one matchup that we like. And what you can also do with this run, and this is why I like it so much, is we can run it in three different ways. We can run it, as you saw there, right up the gap and, and try to cut it back to the outside. If they base the line, we could actually run it like a power O and try to get outside of the right here. And this is just an auto, almost like an automatic four or five yards. And then if they, if they say... if. If, if they overplay the middle and they try to run commit, we can cut it wide here and just follow back around here. Um, just hold left on the joystick. Don't hold and you don't want to hold turbo on this run, guys, until until you're into the second level. Uh, once you get through the line of scrimmage. So and with Adrian Peterson being as big and as powerful as he is, uh, it's going to allow us to really get something going now. Now what we're going to use this counter for is situations like this when there's nobody over there. We'll just call the counter. And you see, we get good blocks on that side, and it's just going to force them to have to guard against it. Now, I really like the counter more for when they're overloading the left side, because um, the inside zone will get the job done for us on that left if they're not overloading it. But if two guys pulling, and we're still going to be able to get to that second level. Now, a lot of guys will start run committing against this run, and... With the counter, if you run commit against it, it's actually going to make it better for us because we're going to get to the outside faster and we're going to be able to bounce it wide. Now, with the in and that's why I say the counter is kind of your ace in the hole with on this base play uh, because if you're in the inside zone split and they run commit, you're only going to be able to still get your five. You're not going to be able to get your big, big runs here. But when they over pursue and they run commit against the counter, you're going to see here we're able to get to the edge with Adrian Peterson, and we are one-on-one -on -one with the safety once again, and it's just a matter of whether or not we make a move or something to get rid of him. And that's the idea of this counter, guys. It's, it's the run you save for that third and inches when they're starting to really kind of lock down your inside zone run. Um, you know, you're going to use this counter to really break things open. As far as passing from this formation, uh, we have two plays I wanted to discuss. And the first one is the vertical tight end cross. And what we want to do with this is we want to put um, our receiver on the right side of the screen on a comeback, our receiver on the left side of the screen on a smart routed out route, and Adrian Peterson, we want to put him on a wheel route. Obviously, the first read on this play is going to be Adrian Peterson. Typically, you'll see they'll start blitzing against this to try to get people to stop the run. And if they do that, we're going to be able to easily hit AP over there. Guys, one of the best defenses in the game this year is the two-man under. And that's what I love about this play is uh, every route will beat two-man under with the way we set it up. Uh, obviously, the wheel route does a really good job in this formation of beating two-man under. Uh, you see we can get that ball out, out to the flats really quick, even if they are in a, a man coverage set. And then if they're 
in main coverage and we just want to go one step further with this, the tight end out of the backfield, our second read, will be able to beat man coverage when he cuts back to the inside. Our third read, and this is why I really call this play, because we can do the rest of the hot routes with other um, things here. If we can uh, get the ball here, maybe. Sometimes this thing. Sometimes practice mode freaks out. Okay. Um, but the, the third read on this is Patterson. And this is going to be a ballsy route to call, but it's very effective. When the icon lights up, that's when you know they're open. So you're going to wait, wait, wait. Here it lights up, and you're just going to throw the ball uh, with a – you want to kind of pass lead it up a little bit, but you don't want to pass lead it directly up. You want to have it maybe about 11.30 or 11.15 o'clock on if it was a clock uh, type of situation. So – this is a route that you're gonna have to practice though because it beats it beats every it beats every man coverage. The one it doesn't beat all the time is two man under. Um, just because the they play everything a little bit better in two man under and that's why I'm trying to show you. It still beats it, but it's a little bit more of a discouraging throw. Um, and you see you're just gonna kinda touch pass it over him. Um, but I see two men under for some reason they'll they'll kinda stay with it a little bit. But if they're in cover zero, they're not gonna be able to stay with this route. You see you're just gonna wait, lights up, and then just bomb it over top with Josh Freeman's big arm and Patterson's speed. We're gonna use this route to crush uh, some man to man coverage. Okay. So that's the first three reads. Our fourth read is our smart routed out right on the left, which we're going to glance at anyways when we look to Peterson. Um, whoops, I bumped Allen. Uh, but when we look to Peterson, we're just going to see if that out route gets pressed. If it gets pressed, it's our fourth read. And you know, all know about out routes. When he lights up, just throw it to the outside. Uh, you don't have to pass lead it. Just pull it past it. And uh, you're going to get animations like that all day long. Um, and then our last read on this play is the comeback route to Jennings. And guys, the comeback routes are some of the most, you know, a lot of people don't use comeback routes. You know, I certainly have gotten away from them, but they're some of the most, uh, one of the best routes in the game. They're able to be hot routed with the new hot routes uh, we got this year. And it's just something you need in case they are in a coverage defense or they are in, you know, some type of crazy man coverage. Pass lead it down, and you're just going to get that quick 5, 10 yards uh, out of a nice comeback right there. So that's the vertical tight end cross. Um, that's your base pass. And then if they're sending heavy pressure at you, you're going to call your play action pass here. And um, we're just going to look at it against a, a, a blitz situation. And all, all you want to do here is just put your tight end on a wheel route. And your first read on this play is going to be R1. You're going to let the play action happen. Let the play action happen. R1, uh, not open there. You're going to read him as you go. Um, normally, he will be open, though, against man coverage. Let's take a look at that one more time. Let's see if I can set the... All you got to do is wheel him. Set it up. And there you see, there's the separation. You may need to wait a second or two, but typically, it will, it will work very well. Okay. And then, the... Uh, the reason we put the tight end on a wheel is once the back gets through the line, a lot of times he'll get tackled, but we can easily hit the tight end on the flat route to the right uh, a little bit easier than we could on uh, because the, the wheels are going to suck in on the play action, and with that wheel route, it's going to give you space. Watch the linebackers guarding Carlson. They suck down on the play action, one step hesitation, and then get the ball out of, the, get the ball out of your hands and go. So that's why we like to put him on a wheel route there. All right, and then our, our final reads uh, are a combination between the post and the, and the um, comeback route. If they're in two-man under and they get pressed, then it's going to be uh, it's an unbumpable pattern. Pass lead it into the inside, and Greg Jennings, the new acquisition from uh, Green Bay, is going to be able to uh, beat it in man coverage. And then, of course, in there, if they're in a cover zero blitz, pass lead them up is what I've been doing lately, and it, he just gets big for you. I don't know. Uh, the new pass leads in this year seem to really allow you to torch uh, cover zero blitzes, i found. So we'll try it one more time. We'll see if it works a little bit more. More separation. You may need to click on, but, I mean, it's, it's all about if you have enough time, of course. I mean, you know, sometimes the pressure will just be so fast that you have to go ahead and pass lead in. But you just want to wait. And you just want to click on and go get it. I mean, it's just a deep post. And then um, here on this uh, route to Rudolph, 
it's just a comeback route, something we've been using for years and years, and it's a lot more this year is what I'm trying to start using these more. Uh, they're just so effective against man coverage. So that is the gun normal uh, wing, and I want to share one other thing with you before you go. If and in, if indeed they start run committing and it starts to shut down your your play, so say they're in two man enter and they run commit, but they back these guys off so they don't get B deep. What I like to do is I like to go to the PA cross and I like to put Greg Jennings on a streak, Carlson on a wheel. What's going to happen here, they, they're all going to suck down on the run, and it's going to leave that wheel route wide open and plenty of space for you to get big, big yards. And that's what I like about it. Now, obviously, if they maybe something like this, and they're still going to run commit, um, then you might be able to hit Jennings over the top. But you see, it's just that wheel route is so so effective. And what's going to happen is, eventually they'll start run committing out of uh, a press look. So maybe a two-man under. When that happens, they're going to now be able to take away, maybe there, there's a possibility they'll take away the wheel. But now the streak's going to be wide open. Um, here you see, you're just going to be able to lob that streak over the safety and uh, just burn those ugly run commit defenses that I've been seeing a lot on uh, Virgin Gaming and... Uh, some competitive websites I've been playing on. So just be sure to watch out for the run commit. But obviously, guys, I'm telling you right now, if they are run committing, do not hesitate to call the counter week. Guys, this offense is about running the ball. You know, Josh Freeman's a good quarterback, but he's not a great quarterback. We need to rely on our running game. We have the best running back in the NFL right now, and uh, we're going to be able to force them to have to run commit, have to bring eight, nine guys in the box, even ten guys in the box, force them to stop this inside zone and outside counter and uh, see if we can potentially move the ball effectively and rely on our defense to win games. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check out the defensive version of this video where we discuss our base play out of our nickel defense. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.